Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. And if you're enjoying the kind of stuff you've seen on the channel at the moment, how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to help the channel grow. Today, I'm here at Alan Keith for something very, very special indeed. As things go that we brought you on the channel, today is particularly exciting because it's this. This is chorus number 10. And today, as you can see, it is in fact in steam. And that is quite groundbreaking because it was steamed yesterday and today is its first public steaming. And yours truly here is here to be part of the crew to operate it, which is something very, very, very exciting. Now, obviously you may be thinking, hmm, that looks vaguely familiar to me. That's got a kind of a vibe I've seen, maybe in some popular children's stories. Yes, yes it is. This is a falcon, or rather, this is the next in the line, following on from the chorus number three. This one, this is the new one that's going to run on the chorus railway. And to say that I'm excited is a complete understatement. And obviously you can see that at this point in time, it is not finished. It has been assembled to steam, but after this a day, this open day, it will be disassembled again and uh, the construction will continue and it will be completed as there are various things around it that we need to work with. But we'll be demonstrating up and down this short piece of track today. Now, the big thing to take from this, aside from the fact that it is not finished and it, that it is in works gray, is it is absolutely stunning. When I think a narrow gauge locomotive, this, this comes to mind. Now, personally for me, I quite like number seven, but number seven's got a feel of being toy-like compared to this, whereas this has the look of a, a proper engine. The lines of it, the way it looks, it's, it's a big engine scaled down. That's how it feels. It just looks a proper little tank engine. And I'm very much in love with it already and cannot wait. Everything about it is lovely. The curve of the tank, the size of the cab, the wheels are just, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And what's weird is to think that something that looks so Victorian, so old, so heritage, is brand spanking new. At this moment in time, this is the newest steam locomotive in the country. Or at least the newest steaming. This is the, done the least amount of steaming out of anything. This is very, very, very exciting. And the con they just the concept that today, in 2022, we're still building new steam locomotives to work in the heritage sector is absolutely bonkers. But isn't it wonderful? Now you guys know the format of these videos now. We see the thing, I enthuse about it, and then we talk about the history. And that's where this one becomes a bit more different because today is history. This is the most momentous moment of this thing's history since the frames were assembled. This is huge. This is genesis. This is birth of a legend. This is its whole story being started from this moment going forward. The history isn't written. We're actually making its history. This is going to be one of its most momentous and notable occasions was its first public outing. We're actually doing that. That's it beyond anything else that we normally do where we talk about what it has done, its past trance, its past days, its past everything. And we talk about its legacy that it's put down. But this thing, it's all got to prove it. It's all got to do it. This is genesis of a steam engine. This is completely different to anything else we've ever done. And to be part of that history, to be part of that story of it moving forward, that is truly, truly special and such a massive honor. Now, obviously, we will come back at some point when this is at the chorus and do a proper review on it rather than a first look but for now there is no history i mean there is obviously history to what this is and what it represents this is going to be the next falcon the original chorus where we had three number one to three which all eventually became number three which then got taken over by the great western and became part of the great western stock book which then became br stock book which then got sold to the talaclin and then have been at the talaclin long enough that their history and their life what they are is very much ingrained and intertwined with the Talaclin. So the chorus could never really realistically say, 
hey lads, we want our engine back. So to have this is the next best thing. This is the evolution. This is the continuation of Chorus. But that is basically all we can talk about with it. We can talk about when this was built. But the big thing that I want to talk about is this. The fact that despite this engine is actually in one piece behind us and is seeming starting to think about making steam, it's not actually done. You see, this is deceiving having an engine in one piece that's going to operate that we're going to drive today. But it still needs quite a lot of money to actually bring this, complete it and get it to the Chorus Railway. So there's a link in the video description if you guys want to help complete this, the newest locomotive in the UK, and make it happen and take it back to its home at the Chorus Railway. They would greatly appreciate it and I would too because the sooner we do that the sooner I can drive it and the sooner I can make a review of it. So when I say it's not complete, what do I mean? Well, it's various little things, like there should be splashes here. There should also be lagging around the boiler here and lagging insulating the tank. There's also things like the cinder cocks down there. There's no linkage yet installed, so they are constantly open. And if we want to shop them, it will be manual. And then over on this side, the injectors. Well, the injectors are a two-man outside operation at the moment because they're not quite finished. The tap is here. There's no linkage to be able to do it from the cab, but that's fine. We can work with that. So it's a work in progress that we can demonstrate it and running today, but certainly not ready to go and haul a train. Of course, there's that question of what color will it be painted? And this is a mock-up of how it will be. And with that, onto the cab. So welcome to a very unfinished cab. Now, there are a couple of cool features with this. Like this bit here is going to be hinged. So when we're coldening it up, we can tilt the cab out and pour the cold in here. Currently, there is no bunker, so we're working out of a plastic bag. The most obvious feature that you may have noticed here is this absolutely wonderful regulator built on this construction here. Uh, that is, I think that's fantastic. It's up there going to the dome out the front, through the linkage. I just, I think that's brilliant. It's a real showpiece in the middle of the engine. The other big thing is it's quite a big, nice cab. There's plenty of room in here. Obviously, putting the bunker in, and the air brake apparatus over that side will eat into the space somewhat, but it feels nice and big and airy. I like the big hole here. The visibility looking forward is, it's okay, actually, it's not bad, but there's so much space to be able to hang out the side of the cab. And most importantly, there's somewhere here to put your tea and lean on. That's a very important part of the plan. So with the firebox door here, there is this single damper down there, so that works, which is either open or shut. The gauge frames with isolators and the drains, the boiler maker plate there the regulator as mentioned the shut off for the manifold injector one injector two the pressure gauge the reverser and the handbrake you may be thinking Laura, you've missed some things no no i'm not they're just not here yet the other thing about this handbrake is it's um it's not finished so it's quite low so you have to make sure you're grabbing this and not that because otherwise you chap your fingers with that it's going to be up here it's just not there yet the whistle is also over there going through the forward window of the cab. It was literally, and I, I do stress this, the cab and the tank were bolted on this week to get it ready for this event. So it has been just bolted together. It will be riveted together. It's not finished by any means, but it gives you a good feeling of what the engine's going to be like and a nice kind of, it's here. It makes it real. An engine that has run suddenly becomes a real breathing thing. So with that, we'll go back to doing a little bit of the prep work this morning. And then I guess it'll be time to take it out and test it on this mighty railway. Now, I've fired on many railways and I've driven on many more. But this one, this one will tax me, I feel, more than any other railway. First up, they gave me the instruction manual for the new locomotive. And having studied it studiously, I was ready to begin my prep. My first task was to clear out the remains of the fire from when the locomotive was tested yesterday. And with a great clear, I was sent off to go get some wood to light up with. Armed with my collection of wood, I built my fire with a sprinkling of coal around the outside of the box, and then 
I was able to light it, bringing life to this thing for the first time in public. I was given a shovel. With the fire caught, I could make a start on the prep, but the engine had to be ready for when the public were turning up, which meant that, unlike our normal videos, I didn't really have time to talk. I started off doing the rear motion for the big end and the coupling rods. Now, I know I've done things like Dolgok before that've got inside motion on the narrow gauge, but I'm already realizing why number seven is such a superior little design because everything's on the outside and I don't have to go underneath. Whereas this one, this one's flawed. I mean, personally, I think far more aesthetically pretty. Oh, look at that little lid. This is genuinely quite exciting. Dribbly, 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 dribbly. Oh God, somewhere there, dribbly, dribbly. Dribbly, 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 dribbly. Now, I'm going to moan about this because this is going to be awkward. I want you to understand that when we actually do this properly, there's going to be cladding on here, so this will be further out. There will also be splashes over the wheels there, so the general space in here will have decreased. But at the moment, I can do this by reaching entirely across to the other side. Bit goes in there. Yeah. Right, I can do these. And now I need to go right inside. Why is this designed like this? Why are we building an engine to... Why couldn't we just build a diesel instead? I can't believe I said that. That's, that's travesty. A bit there, a bit there. And then we've got over. Thus, there's the, the hole for a gland there. Then there's an axle box hole there. There's no holes yet on the valve spindle, so they're just going to get some oil on and we'll keep chucking some oil on that during the day. That's an axle box. That's done, that's done. That's done, that's done. Okay. Now the eccentrics at the rear. Stupid, 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 stupid. I thought we'd have automatic things fitted to this. With the prep completed on both sides, I returned to the cab to see to my fire. It's going to be better just to do that the handy holdy thing. Lob, 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 lob. Again, when hand firing, it's important to pay full attention to what you're doing, that you're making sure each lump of coal goes exactly where you want it to, that you're using a full amount of time and effort to ensure each lump lands somewhere important. With the fire seen to, there was one thing left to do and that was to start working on the brass and get the engine clean and ready to greet its public. And doing this, there was one final major step, and that was to have the builder's plates installed on the side of the cab. It's finished now, we've got the plates on it. And just like that, it was time to take the engine on its first test run along the whole length of the line. Yep, all of it. Yeah, this is it. This is the entire railway. Exciting stuff, eh? And having gently brought the engine to a halt, I could begin the ascent up the bank.
So this is it. This is chorus number 10. And we have been shuffling around a few times today. There's been a couple of drivers, people from Alan Keith. But this is my proper go of driving it. I have admittedly driven it. It's not my first go on it. There's been so many people around, so we decided to wait to the end of the day. But this is, without doubt, and honestly, its first day in traffic, in public. It was literally put together this week. It got a boiler certificate on Tuesday. Now, you might be able to tell that the railway here is quite big, quite long, and quite challenging. And it is downhill. Because as soon as I take the handbrake off, we roll down here. Now, I only have a handbrake at the moment, which is really nice. It's a really controllable handbrake, and I feel like I have the weight of the engine on it. I feel like I have the locomotive, and I feel, well, happy with it. There's sometimes you feel the handbrake, you do feel, mm, I'm not sure if this will stop us. Whereas this good sense of braking and belief in that, the only thing I don't like about this reverser currently is that it goes a little too fast, you have to pull it back to notch in. But that's, again, work in process. Which brings us on to the real joy, and that is this regulator, which is, without a doubt, the best thing about the engine. Up on this construction here, the throw of it is beautiful. so controllable it's absolute when we were discussing doing this day here the thing we were talking about was going to be it's a short length of track with a locomotive with only a handbrake and probably because it's brand new a tight regulator as it's bedding in no sir it is an absolutely super regulator and that's brilliant now there are lots of things on this it is missing for instance the glass the bunker, the cladding. So it does feel a lot of heat coming off the boiler and the back head because there's nothing to stop it. And yes, everything feels a bit exposed and unfinished because it is. But driving a locomotive that's in this kind of state of, well, complete <laughs> assembledness, but not complete. There's a certain kind of rawness, a wildness to it. It feels really special and untamed it doesn't feel like a polished machine it doesn't feel like a preserved machine that's been polished and loved it feels like a working machine and i know it's brand new but it feels because it's raw because it's not finished because it's not polished it gives it a certain credentials and industrialness that it doesn't actually have and that makes it all the more special What's also special is the fact that this fills a gap in Chorus's history. The, the legacy that this has to live up to is quite a momentous. And the fact that we are now today making its own history, making its own legacy, this is its genesis, this is the beginning. This could well be the birth of a legend. It could be the birth of something a lot worse, it depends how it goes, we don't know yet. But this is its genesis, this is its first day, this will be forever remembered in this thing's legacy. And that, to be involved in it, regardless of how nicely it rolls and rides on the short length of track or how nice and airy and big the cab is, how nice it, nothing of that matters compared to the importance of this day and the operating it and getting to do something with it. This is such an important day and to drive it is such a massive honour.
The big thing to remember though, is that even though I am driving the locomotive, it is, as I've mentioned many times, not finished. The railway needs in the region of £20,000 to actually get this completed and finished. There's a link in the video description, maybe think about helping out, because then I can drive it properly and take it up the bank with a train. But this, This is exciting. So many years of talking about it, planning it, feeling it, even as long as I've been involved in the chorus, talking about this thing, how it's coming, what's gonna happen with it, to actually have it, to hear those plans come to fruition and see it in the flesh and to drive it. This is special. This is so special. And also, if you give it some, got a really nice little bark. I can't wait to do something with this, but it's just this engine, actually having it real at long last and to be one of the few, one of the first drivers. In fact, I am the first chorus man to drive this locomotive in public. And the honor of that is amazing. It is the newest engine I have ever touched. It's the newest steam engine in the UK, the most recently ticketed, the most recently in operation. And to be here with it, I just, it's magical. It's truly magical. A piece of history that was lost, well, moved, to recreate it, to bring it back, and to be here at this part of its journey is brilliant. It's so much better than I thought it was going to be. I thought its first day in public traffic, there would be teething issues, there would be things wrong with it, there are things that it was unhappy with. Considering how quickly the guys here put this together to make it work for today, it's amazing. There are no major faults with it. There are things that need to be done to complete it. There's nothing wrong with it. They have done such an amazing job that this engine, fresh out of the box, noting that's unheard of to have something in this stage operating and to go no it's fine there's nothing wrong with it because normally even when you overhaul something there are issues with it the engine needs work it needs repairs running in troubles this first day of running in and we've gone everything's fine everything's lubricating as it should everything's working as it should it is an absolutely perfect first day in traffic and that's a massive credit to not only the design of it and the people who've worked to update it but to the builders here at Alan Keith. They have done an amazing job and I am just honestly completely blown away by it because I was expecting this to be a struggle of a day, an engine that had been put together It's a real, real amazing machine. I cannot wait to see how this develops. And with that, I'm just gonna keep playing with it because it's brilliant. So this is the end of open day here at Allen Keeps Works, which means it's the end of the day of this in its first public day operating. And to be here having a go with it, to be one of the very first drivers, has been a real, real honor. And I have loved it. It's a really cracking engine, but remember, as I said several times in the video, it's not done yet. It needs a good 20 grand to get it actually complete at the chorus. So there's a link in the video description. If you fancy possibly helping to complete this, that would be great. I'd really would appreciate it, and so would the rest of the railway, because I want to drive this at the chorus. If you want more information on Alan Keith, there's a link to their website as well. And with that, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, how about clicking somewhere there for a couple of our other locomotive reviews? With that, we'll see you next time. Ta-ra.